This is Dr. Sid Tyson from Violin, New Jersey, and I'd like to share my technique for performing simultaneous bilateral LASIK combined with a camera inlay and this 47-year-old hyperopic presbyo. I'll be using the IFS 150 laser for pocket and flap creation and the Visex S4 laser for the refractive treatment. I'm aiming for a Plano target in this patient's dominant left eye and a minus 0.75 offset in her non-dominant inlay eye. Attention is directed to the non-dominant eye first, where it will be marked in preparation for inlay insertion. The first Purkinje reflex of the central visual axis is marked with gentian violet. The S4 makes this very easy because it's a coaxial light beam and we don't have to worry about vertical offset to compensate for. A 4mm ring marker is then centered on the reflex and the cornea marked. And this mark responds very nicely to the 3.8mm diameter of the inlay. So it's a great reference point for inlay centration. The limbus is then marked to aid in placement of the pocket entrance. The suction ring is then applied with a temporal bias to help us visualize those uh, limbal markings. We want to make sure that the, the ring handle is parallel to the floor for good applination. Then the applination cone is lowered into place and docked into position. The gantry is then lowered until full corneal applination is achieved. I like creating a pocket for the inlay first and we do that using the IFS 150 laser. It is recommended that the pocket be at least 250 microns deep, but I like to go as deep as possible while maintaining at least 250 microns of stroma posterior to the inlay. And you can see in this case we've gone to a depth of 300 microns. The density of pro-inflammatory keratocytes is much lower the deeper you go. On the laser screen we're carefully aligning the pocket placement with the corneal ring marker. Uh, we want to make sure that it's uh, adequately placed nasally uh, to assure proper inlay centration, uh, which you can see with the arrows here. So you don't want to short side yourself here. So you have adequate placement of the inlay. Then the channel is extended to the limbus automatically. We found that 4x4 four four spot line separation and energy of 0.65 microjoules is optimized. And we've got nice smooth pocket dissections and quick visual recoveries with those settings. Utilizing the same interface with suction still engaged, we go ahead and put in the settings to create an 8.5 millimeter flap of 100 microns thickness, at least 100 microns above the pocket. And we also want to make sure that it's lined up so that it's formed inside the pocket side cut. We do not want to have the interfaces cross if we can help it. But if they do cross, it's okay. Because unlike the flap interface, the opening to the pocket interface is constrained to 4.7 millimeters. So it's easy to check. Next. We release gas from both interfaces with a Sinsky hook. This allows any OBL that might interfere with iris registration or tracking to dissipate easily. Attention is now directed to the dominant eye, where a standard LASIK procedure aiming for Plano will be performed. I like to register the iris prior to flap creation. I find that this eliminates potential OBL related tracking errors. The IFS uh, creates a nice, quick, smooth 9mm flap for this hyperopic treatment. You see how easily the flap separates and can be retracted. Nice smooth bed. And for this hyperopic treatment, I like to use a flap hinge protector.
and the treatment goes in a standard manner. Attention is redirected now to the non-dominant eye. You'll notice that there's excellent gas clearance. It's nice clear interfaces. The hyperopia has been treated already, aiming for the residual minus 0.75 diopters. And now we're going to begin pocket dissection. The dissection is much easier if there is a little bit of moisture on the pocket dissector as you can see. Just a little bit of moisture inter interface really does help. It doesn't have to be a lot. We don't want any swelling in the interface, but just a little bit of moisture helps the dissection process. We'll make sure the pocket is completely dissected especially nasally. Then we load the inlay onto the insertion forceps, concave shiny side down with about a quarter of the inlay edge exposed. The inlay is then inserted into the pocket and centered over the first Purkinje mark. I like to insert beyond the centration mark and pull back to the desired position. This minimizes any folds. I like using a dry weck to help tamponade the inlay in the pocket. I find that this allows for a nice smooth release and retraction of the delivery forceps. And they don't stick to the pocket if the forceps are a bit moist. It helps to be efficient and minimize inlay manipulation and time spent in the pocket. Now the visual recoveries will be much faster. Finally, we bring the patient over to the AccuTarget HD for inlay centration checking, where we like to see the inlay to Purkinje alignment within 300 microns of each other. We see here that we're fortunate to achieve an ideal placement, with the inlay being 59 microns nasal and 49 microns inferior to the Purkinje. This I would consider to be an ideal result, and I'm going to have a very happy patient. So thank you very much for your kind attention.